Lord and His people at this time. After that man becomes a strong, strong successor. Despite public appearances, the Texas Rattlesnake has deep feelings for both friends and foes in the WWE. Thanks to shoot interviews, WWE documentaries, and his very own podcast, it has become more clear over time, both backstage and in the ring, that you can witness tensions escalating and even actual arguments with other wrestlers. Today, played by the top five wrestlers that Stone Cold Steve Austin hates. Number five, Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson is one of wrestling's biggest what if stories, as the man was constantly sabotaging himself when it came to backstage issues. WWE did a really great job of positioning him as a potential main event player. Everyone quickly accepted it. Ahmed Johnson. No, that shit is new, bro. Hell no, bro. Just another man, bro. That shit, nah, shit, mad gay. It stands for storyline, but nah. That shit is weird. That shit is why. Okay, with wrestling's biggest stars such as Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, and The Ultimate Warrior. Whether it was injury or attitude issues, Real Ahmed go boy. Very nice. Years since his terrible run in WCW where he stole Booker's tea. Yes, Ahmed stole Booker T's tea. Ahmed Johnson claimed that Steve Austin graffitied his car after a championship win with the N-word. That one guy you would say you dislike the most, that just totally turned you off the most that you've ever dealt with. Don't go to Austin. Awesome. Wrote on my rental car. This was after you won the belt, right? After? Yeah, this was like the next few matches after you won the belt, so congratulations, nigga. What did we do? And, uh, Damn, bro. I'm in saying Stone Cold is racist, bro. Do y'all believe him? Do y'all believe our man, bro? Do y'all believe Stone Cold Steve Austin is racist? Let me know, bro. I don't know if he's racist or not. I don't know. I don't know. And said that they saw Stone Cold out there. I ain't never. I mean, I've always felt he was a little. Racist approach. I never really, I didn't, I didn't associate with him. Steve Austin wouldn't comment on it right away, but would do so in an interview with Mark Henry, claiming that it wasn't true, and Mark Henry vouched for Steve and his reverence in the black community. You got to a guy that you didn't like, and a guy that said things about me that uh, are untrue. I heard him call you a racist. Yep. Out of all the people on earth that's of Caucasian persuasion, <laughs> I would attest that, <laughs> that you are not a racist. Number four, Hollywood, all tokens. While in WCW, Hulk Hogan appeared on the Buffalo Love Sponge to respond to dirt sheet rumors. And the bottom line is, when I show up there, if I say I want to stack the whole territory up in a pile and sit on them and beat every guy in the dressing room in one night, you know, as they all come down to the ring to interfere, if I want to stack them all up, I can do that. And Vince Russo, the head writer, had just left WWE and jumped over to WCW to try and revive them. Hogan and the older wrestlers were not part of his plans, which lead to Hogan responding live on the radio about the current WCW backstage situation and talking about what life could be if he left WCW. Well, shoot, all I gotta do is shave my head and be Stone Cold's partner. Yeah. Now, oh, can you imagine Stone Cold and Hollywood as tag? I mean, now that's definitely an undefeated idea. Steve had worked for eight years to get to the top spot, and he became very paranoid and protective of his character. Stone Cold once again put the Knicks on a potential feud. It's time due to Hogan's reputation. Damn, bro. Stone Cold, Steve Austin, Hulk Hogan, the biggest names in wrestling history. Who y'all think is better, Stone Cold or Hulk Hogan? Let me know, bro. Asian and Steve's belief that Hogan wouldn't put him over. Think about the, never having to run with Hogan. Guys, man, I, I was running so hard back then, hard-headed as hell. You know, the woman on the street that, you know, he wasn't ever going to do any favors for anybody. I damn sure wasn't going to do any favors for anybody who wasn't going to favor back. Legendary WrestleMania 18 match between The Rock and Hogan should have been Austin's moment, but instead, it became Scott Hall defeating the Rattlesnake. The day before Mania, Scott Hall would have a relapse, and Steve would have the outcome changed, and now he would go over. At least we all got to witness the best sell of a stunner, thanks to Scott Hall. Number 3, Bill Goldberg. Steve Austin and Goldberg were two of wrestling's biggest stars, but due to their very similar appearances, there was huge heat that was perceived between them. Goldberg is They had heat? I didn't know that. I didn't know they had heat back in the day. Did y'all know? Let me know. What is this? Who is Goldberg? I don't know anything about it. Sounds like a Jewish guy. And he would all bubble to the surface after Goldberg called out the what daddy to a match. Austin ignored it initially, but on an appearance on the Howard Stern show, Steve was asked about it, to which he replied that it was Bush League, and to give him a call if he ever makes it to the big leagues. That yeah, basically was a WCW version of me, you know, and uh, shaved head and all of you know, the black trunks, boots, everything, right, and you know, copping your whole thing. To say that he wasn't uh, influenced by me, be, uh, he's your Imus, in other words, like what I have. There you go, now you know something. Now I a few years later, all would seem well 
have Austin retired even going on to referee a match between him and Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 20. But just a few years after that match, it sounded like he was being serious. Yeah, he's full of sh Goldberg would poke the bear again during a media appearance, watching Steve Austin's legendary beer bash to stage. <laughs> about 50% of that beer went in, about 50% of it went on. That's the showbiz part of it. And that Mr. DTA wasn't really drinking beer. Goldberg, bring your ass down there. So sell this right now. You think you'd win? He was mobbed by reporters for a response. Do you think Bill could win? No, I think you'd win. Uh, absolutely. Number two, <laughs> Owen Hart. Fight. Owen Hart has gone on to become this sort of cult hero with wrestlers like Edge and Chris Jericho pointing to Owen as the main reason for them becoming a wrestler. While he did achieve success in his wrestling career, he never was able to quite reach the top rung with any sort of consistency, while also being in the shadow of his older brother, Bret Hart. Owen admitted that the wrestling career wasn't his main focus and it was more of a means to an end of supporting his family and even had plans of leaving wrestling and becoming a firefighter. If there was one thing that the Hart family was known for, it was their technical skill and protection of opponents. So when Owen Hart suggested performing a pile driver to Steve when they had their match at SummerSlam 97, Stone called out his reservation, but trusted in the heart. Yeah, I'm gonna remember that match, bro. I don't remember that match. I was watching that match. This is when um, Owen Hart, like, um, broke, um, dropped Stone Cold Steve Austin in his neck, and Austin hasn't been the same. He had to change his wrestling style and all that. Family name. During the match, after pulling off the pile driver, he did not protect Steve's head, which ended up paralyzing Steve Austin in the ring for the next few minutes. Steve would end up somehow pulling it all together and pinning Owen. It just goes to show how much grit that Steve has. Owen would go on to hold the moniker of Owen 316, I just broke your neck, which is very much in poor taste. Although it wasn't his own idea, the biggest thing was that Owen Hart never took the phone and apologized to Steve. Which Steve would getting heat. That's smart. He's getting getting heat. You know, he's being a heel, getting heat, you know. That's what wrestling is. Professional wrestling. I want to say really upset him. Steve's wife also came out and addressed the situation from Steve's perspective. He had a resentment, but mainly because he does know if I would have broke someone's neck, I sure would be calling him. He wasn't really wanting to go to his funeral and say sorry. So he, he resented that and poem. He didn't actually call him up and apologize. Due to the tragedy over the Edge 99, where Owen Hart fell to his death after a quick release harness broke, two were never able to squash their beef. Hart's family widow believes continuing the show was wrong and not what Owen would have wanted. The Owen Hart death continues to be discussed and the response to it is still debated to this day. Time heals all wounds and while Steve is now able to move on from any resentments and Owen now has his very own tournament that celebrates his legacy in AEW. A wild slap nuts appears. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Number one, Jeff Jarrett. Steve Austin and Jeff Jarrett go way back. Jeff's dad, Jerry, was the first promoter that Steve worked for. I'm just another wrestler who's green and we really got over with the fans. Steve would go on to wrestle Jeff many times in the territories. However, Steve never won a single match against Jeff. Jeff was pushed as a star and a perfect babyface thanks to being the son of the owner. Taught not to hit a lady, and I was raised that you gotta give a lady respect. Steve Austin jumps out here now. It's funny that he came back to WWE after a terrible experience in WCW. Jeff Jarrett insulted Steve in his first promo about his 316 moniker being blasphemous. Steve took real offense to this as it could threaten his merchandise numbers and was waiting for Jeff when he came backstage. Stone Cold, no, 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 Stone Cold. You will always be the ringmaster. And it's for your blasphemous merchandise that offends me. And in Jeff's own words, read him the riot act. To give you an idea of how heated it was backstage, a 97 pilled up Shawn Michaels was trying to moderate the altercation. Well, I gotta thank some of you for I know, baby, but you can't get no action in the reaction you get from a heartbreak kid. Begging for cooler heads to prevail. Years later, the dirt sheets and everyone else knew about this heat, but Jeff would constantly downplay it. Steve as well, too. I'll tell you why in a minute. Years later, Jeff appeared on Steve Austin's WWE Network show where Steve dismissed the beef, but conveniently skipped over many of their alleged real-life incidents. Steve Austin got his revenge, and he was smart enough to know that when he started his own podcast after retiring, that any beef he had would be best to be avoided so he can have the best guests and even better ratings, which he did being one of the first wrestlers to have a podcast before the market got flooded with every Tom, Dick, and Mary. 